Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum, peace be unto you. Welcome to the Dean Show, and we greet you with the greetings that are the best of greetings. Jesus greeted his followers with peace, Moses, Abraham, and all the messengers of God. And the last and final messenger sent to mankind, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And we always have an exciting show for you. And today's not an exception because we have our guests all the way from Bosnia. Bosnia, we want to know a little bit about Bosnia. They got a lot of Muslims there. People think, oh, Bosnia is the Arab right in the desert, Turkish, this, that, and the other. No, we got some Caucasian, white skin, blue eyes. And we're going to learn about them today with our special guest, Dr. Race Mustafa Cherry, the Grand Mufti of Bosnia. We'll be right back. This is the Dean, the Dean this is the Dean. 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 Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam. Peace be with you. Peace be with you too. How, Assalamu alaikum. How are you, Dr. Race Mustafa Cherit? How very are you good, doing? very good. Very good to see you. I, I, I thank you so much. I know you're very busy. Now, many of us are busy, but you're extra busy. You, you're visiting us here in, in America, and you did like a tour of uh, how many masjids? Ah, five, five. Five? When are you going back to uh, Bosnia? Tomorrow, inshallah. Tomorrow. Thank you so much. May God Almighty, the Creator, Allah, reward you for finding the time to be with us. Thank you very much. Thank nice being in Chicago. You know, the Dean Show is dedicated to help clear the many misconceptions, the false fallacies that people have. There's a lot of Islamophobia out here, and we're trying to show people what Islam is really about. Islam is really about, you know, sharing this message of peace with the world, you know. So people such as yourself who are out there, you know, uh, in the media, people look up to you, and we want to get some of your advice. Many people think that Islam is something that is an Arab riding into the desert, you know, has, you know, connotations with terrorism and all these other things. So when they tune in and they hear what we have to say, they're like, you know what? Islam is not that bad. And many people accept it. So, but now, when we mention Bosnia, some people have never, for our American viewers, they've never heard of Bosnia. So we're going to get a little lesson for you today. Can you tell us, we've heard this word, Bosniaks, Bosnia. What is this? Well, uh, I don't know uh, whether we can uh, tell the story about Bosnia, a story of 1,000 years of Bosnian history, of which is uh, 600 years of Islam. And this year we are celebrating uh, uh, 11 centuries of Bosnian statehood and the Bosnian uh, history of multiculturalism, multi-tolerance uh, uh, of different religions, traditions, uh, languages, and so on. But when we come to Islam, uh, we uh, want to remind your viewers that all the religions uh, that claim divinely inspired uh, revelations uh, came from the East. And even the sun is rising from the East, as we know. So the three Abrahamic religions that claim the uh, source of the book Taurat, Torah, and Injil, the Gospel, and the Quran, which are the uh, first covenant, covenant, the second covenant, and the last covenant. So the prophets of, of Adam, Abraham, uh, Nuh, Abraham, Ibrahim, Nuh, uh, Musa, Isa, and Muhammad, peace be upon all of them, these prophets made history or made changes in the humanity. All of these prophets are the common ground and common share of uh, uh, Islam, Christianity, and Judaism. Now, if we say that all religions came from the East, that means there was no prophet that God has sent to Europe, and there is no European prophet. 
they are all from the same area, which is the Middle East or Palestine or Mecca, uh, as we know. So there is no one, uh, there is no uh, ge geography priority for any religion in Europe. We are equal in the geographical terms. So we in the West or in Europe, uh, were waiting for the messages and messengers who came from the East. So some of us in Europe uh, did hear uh, the message of uh, Isa, Musa, and uh, some of us uh, heard the message of the Prophet Muhammad, but they are all the same. Historically, we have these three religions that are ma uh, named by uh, Jude Christianity by the person Isa, and uh, Judaism also by Yehud. Uh, but Islam is not uh, named by a person. It is named by a abstract idea which contains the very meaning of peace because the root of Islam came from uh, Sin Mim Lam, which means peace. So Islam means peaceful submission to God and Muslim means peaceful man, literally. Now we can talk later why, how it happened that the Muslim uh, became the, the, just the opposite to this. Now, when we come to, to talk about Islam and Europe, we have to remember that Islam, as Christianity and Judaism, arrived in Europe at a certain time, in certain conditions, first in the beginning of a century in the Iberian Peninsula, which is the, the Spain, or uh, the, the old name, it's called Andalusia, and it lasted for eight centuries. In 1492, both the Christian, both the Muslims and Jews were expelled. And by, you, uh, uh, by the way, the Christians who have been expelled from the Iberian Peninsula in 1492 arrived uh, into Sarajevo and were received by Muslims and saved by Muslims together with their Passover book called the Haggadah, which is known now as the Sarajevo Haggadah. So I am proud as a grandchild of my grand grandfathers who did not, they, they didn't, they were not afraid of Universal Declaration of Human Rights. They, they were not afraid of the so-called uh, international uh, uh, watchers for the uh, violation of human rights, but they acted on the basis of their religion, Islam, and they helped the Jews who were expelled from, Christian, from uh, Spain or Andalusia at the time. Now, when Islam uh, ended his mission in the uh, Iberian Peninsula, the light of Islam uh, was uh, in a candle in the Balkan Peninsula, which is uh, uh, the uh, 14th century, and it has arrived in, uh, into Bosnia and Herzegovina in uh, 1463, where uh, the Bosniaks, they are called uh, Dobri Bosniani or the Good Bosniaks have accepted Islam in uh, totality and especially noble uh, Bosnian families because uh, previously they were uh, practicing dualism uh, of, of religion and they were not very prone uh, of the clergy and when Islam came they, uh, he, he, it was introduced to them as a natural uh, religion that they accepted. So, from that time until now, uh, we have Islam in Bosnia and Herzegovina with the rich tradition. Now, before we go to break, I heard an interesting story. Now, tell me, is this true that at one point in time you had those who were following Christ? Jesus, peace be upon him, who no Muslim is a Muslim unless he believes in Jesus, that he was one of the mightiest messengers of God, correct? Now, at this point, they were in this region, and they were called, what I was what I was told, and, and we'll, you take off from here, Bogomis, that they didn't accept 
God being three and a trinity or God being a man, they only wanted to worship the creator and not the creation. And when Islam came, the submission to the will of God, they accepted wholeheartedly. Is this true? Well, uh, I, I, I wouldn't say uh, definitely, definitively about it. Uh, is that right? Bogle means, true? how do you translate that? But uh, Bogle means uh, they, they, they were the people who practiced their own religion within the frame of Christianity at the time, mm -hmm. with a particular uh, interpretation of, the, uh, of Christianity, uh, which did not understand very well Trinity as such. So we can we can say that uh, Bogumils were uh, treated as heresy at the time because they were not uh, fully with the uh, to, uh, in, in accordance with what Vatican was uh, teaching and preaching. They were holding on to Unitarianism, the Absolutely. belief in only one God, yes. and that's what Correct. Islam is all about—the belief in one God. We'll be right back with more with Grand Mufti, Doctor Race Mustafa Cherries here on the Dean Show. He is the maintainer. He is the if you say that you do not believe in Jesus, you have stepped outside of Islam. You cannot be a Muslim. It is attended our faith to believe in and love Jesus Christ. I, I would say this thing that you just told me, it's not in the scripture. And they would say, a marginal note added by a scribe, yeah, okay, we know that. And I'd be thinking, if you know this is not the Bible, why are you preaching it as if it's gospel truth? And if we're going to worship something, I figured I might as well worship the Creator instead of any of the creations. Now, in, upon investigating all the religions, I remember finding out the meaning of what Islam is, what a Muslim is. Those who surrender their self to God is a Muslim. Those who surrender, submit to God, God's will. That is it. Islam was pure. It was just, you just pray to God, your Creator. I am not afraid to stand alone. If a lies by my side, I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone. If a lies by my side, I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone. If a lies by my side, I am not afraid to stand alone. Back here on the Dean Show with the Grand Mufti, Dr. Reis Mustafa Cherry. Now, for some people that they don't know, you know, when we say Grand Mufti, can you tell us a, a little bit, you know, about yourself and what are some of your tasks and your roles that you perform back in, in Bosnia and all over the world, actually? Your well, responsibilities. The, the Grand Mufti is known to all Muslims. So he is the, uh, you know, the Mufti is the first Muslim intellectual. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was the Mufti. And the Mufti is the one who sh is uh, spreading the knowledge and education, and he is professing uh, to the pupils and students and people about certain ideas. And in this case, Mufti is an intellectual who is shaping the minds of people who want to listen and to uh, seek advice from him. So the difference between the Mufti and the Qadi is that the Mufti is the man of the opinion. He is the man of intellect, uh, of intellectualism. Why the Qadi is the one who is uh, implementing by force mm -hmm. uh, some of the fatwas that are issued by Mufti. So the Mufti uh, is the one who has no the power, who doesn't have the power of execution. He has the power only of teaching, educating, and spreading goodwill among the people and giving the advice upon the, the question uh, on, on about certain issues. So the Grand Mufti is the spiritual uh, uh, source or reference for the Muslim who wants to know about his religion properly in all uh, aspects of religious life, whether it is uh, uh, 
the uh, worship or uh, legal opinions or uh, the social issues, even political issues. So, uh, in, in, in my case, uh, the Grand Mufti of Bosnia and Herzegovina or the title of the Reisul Ulema is the uh, reference to the highest authority, religious Islamic authority for the Muslim community in Bosnia and Herzegovina, Sanjak or Serbia, Croatia, Slovenia, and uh, partly uh, the uh, Montenegro. So the uh, uh, Islamic authority that is stationed in Bosnia and Herzegovina, the headquarter of, is not only for Bosnia but also for all Bosniaks in particular in Bosnia and Herzegovina and outside. So why this institution is very important? It is important because we, uh, our fathers and grandfathers, have ad adopted Hanafi mezhab. And in accordance to the Hanafi mezhab, the Juma prayer is not valid without the permission or the license of the Khalifa or the Sultan. Since we don't have now Khalifa, uh, the, after the Berlin Congress, uh, when Bosnia was annexed, annexed by the Austro-Hungarian Empire, the uh, Sheikh al-Islam of Istanbul issued a manshur, uh, the document by way of which he legitimized for the Muslim community that they can have their, their own uh, uh, religious head, super, uh, supreme head in Bosnia and Herzegovina that will uh, take the responsibility of Khalifa or, uh, or the Sultan, meaning that he will issue ijaza uh, license to each and every imam and each and every khatib to be able to preach Islam in the mosque so that uh, uh, we don't go astray and do not uh, misrepresent Islam and mispreach. So this is why we are in Bosnia and Herzegovina united community. This is why we are institutionalized and this is why we are uniformed and we don't have uh, any religious uh, uh, this, uh, this uh, disturbance uh, based on uh, internal Muslim intolerance that you have, for example, in other places because uh, we are very disciplined in that. So my responsibility as Grand Mufti by the uh, merit of receiving the mansur is that uh, uh, Muslims gave me the authority to uh, execute or to apply the Sharia uh, rules that are connected to the way we are worship, uh, worshiping, the way we are teaching our religion, which is based on peace and tolerance and understanding of each other. And that's what Islam is all about. Islam says love all mankind and that's why we're sharing because we care and we want to get this message out to the world because purpose of life, you know, everybody has that God-given right to know why that's they've been correct. created, where they're going when they die and what is pleasing to the Creator. So we as those who obviously have chosen to submit only to God, worshiping the Creator, not a stick, not a stone, not a man, not a monkey, not an elephant, no one but the Creator and not His creation, and following the teachings of the last and final messenger, the same way if we were living during the time of Jesus, we would have followed, been following him or Moses or Abraham, but it just so happens to be that Prophet Muhammad is the last and final messenger. So it doesn't matter if you're Italian, Greek, Serbian, Croatian, if you want to submit to God, you can submit to God and be a Muslim. But tell us now, in that neck of the woods, in that, in that region here, you know, some sad events happened. You know, there was a genocide, and people who were declaring that, I just want to worship God, who were living as Muslims, you know, a, people know it was it was war torn Bosnia. It used to be Yugoslavia, then it split up. Can you tell us just and briefly what's going on to prevent something like that happening? That sad event that innocent men, women, and children were being killed. How can people be more aware to create awareness of this to prevent this from ever? It happened like eleven times. Is that true? Mm -hmm. To prevent it from happening for the twelfth time. We're almost out of time. So in short, what can people do? You know, and and like I said, we got love for all mankind. So we want the best for everybody, but we just want people to be aware 
so we can try to help this, prevent this from happening again. Well, everyone can do a lot uh, to, but uh, I can speak uh, what Muslims should do. Uh, first of all, we have Iman, which is the notion of security inside. So the mu'min, uh, the, 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 the one who is uh, a trustworthy, who is uh, spreading uh, the uh, uh, security uh, outside, uh, in the public sphere is the one who has the security and self-confidence in himself. So first of all you have to be clear in your mind uh, which means that uh, the tolerance comes as a sign of strength. Intolerance is the sign of your weakness. So if you know who you are, you know your identity, you know the purpose of life and you know uh, the value of humanity and the human beings, you have no need to be intolerant to others. You, on the, on the contrary, you like to see different people uh, living uh, with you and you sharing, sharing your experience. Now, once we establish our self-confidence in our mind, in our heart, then Islam teaches us that you have to spread the peace. And Muslim is the, Islam means a submission, but uh, this is not a full meaning of Islam. Islam means peaceful submission. There cannot be uh, submission by uh, compulsion. This is why we have this principle in Islam, La ikraha fi din, there is no compulsion in religion. This, is the, this was the uh, historic uh, affirmative action in 8th century that Islam brought uh, to, to, the, to the mankind. So when we say Islam is a submission, we have to add all the time that it is peaceful submission. And the Muslim means literally a peaceful man. Now, how it became that the Muslim, uh, not uh, every terrorist is, not every Muslim is a terrorist, but every terrorist is a Muslim you, somehow. You're upon what's going on, yeah. Yes. Uh, this is this is partly Muslims are responsible themselves and partly uh, because Muslims are hated by some people without any reason. So we cannot change those who hate Islam and Muslims, but we can change our, ourselves. So that means we should not do foolish things and then uh, damage the meaning of Islam. And uh, uh, we should learn that only God accept your religion if you are accepting it peacefully and your submission to God if it is peaceful God will accept it because God himself is a salam he is peace himself so if you force somebody to become a Muslim this is why we have this statement in the Quran La ikraha fi din. it came as a result because one person one father came to the prophet and said, I, I forced my son to accept Islam from Christianity. And Prophet Muhammad told him, no, you should not do this because God told you that uh, there is no compassion in Islam. And then finally, we have this concept of Ihsan, which came from the word Hassan, which means beauty. So, and, and when Prophet was asked, what is Ihsan? He said, uh, and tu'mina billahi ka'annaka the ihsan, which is righteousness, this is well, well-being, this is good and goodness, uh, means uh, that you should worship God as if you see Him, because if you don't see God, God sees you. So that means your righteousness must come from your uh, uh, motivation that you do this not because people praises you only but because God is seeing you what you are doing and therefore you are a beautiful you are smiling you are spreading the peace and security around the world because God is appraising you for that not because somebody is going to write that you are violating human rights no because God is pleased that what you are spreading the kindness, the goodness, the peace, the security around the world. 
Now, this is what we Muslims have to learn, and this is what we Muslims have to teach others about our religion. Security, Iman, peace, Al-Islam, and beauty, goodness, righteousness, Al-Ihsan. Sheikh, we'll take a um, break, and we'll be right back to close it up. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Everybody, in deep down, they believe that there is a God. Yeah. And as much as they deny it. If God exists, and He does, if God sends prophets, and He does, if God reveals books, and He does, should He not tell me how to live my life? Doesn't that make sense? They feel more secure and safe now inside the religion of Islam than they ever felt out in the streets. The best way to bring true, profound happiness, true, profound peace, true, profound tranquility is by following the guidance that God has given. See for yourself what Islam has to say because it really is the path to happiness and truth in life. It comes to you the truth and the attribute of the one who created you, that he's one and alone running this universe, that he doesn't become born, he doesn't die, he doesn't eat and go to the bathroom. This is not God. You got problems here. Yeah. It's, it's, it doesn't make sense. Who was Jesus worshiping? Yeah, because it's recorded in the Gospels. Despite all of the other issues about the Gospels, we put those aside. We just say it's mentioned there that Jesus worshiped God. One who protects us from hunger. I am not afraid to stand alone. If a lies by my side, I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone. If a lies by my side, I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone. If a lies by my side, I am not afraid to stand alone. Back here on the Dean Show, thank you for tuning in. Thank you again for being with us. We have just a few more questions that I want to ask you. I'm going to go off on a tangent real quick. Have you ever had a chance, you know, I listen to you talk also in Bosnian. I speak broken Bosnian, but I understand better. And it's, it's very uh, nice to hear you listen. You really get the people comfortable. You get them smiling and laughing. You're serious also at the same time. Have you ever had a chance to sit, I'm sure you have, but with some atheists, people who don't believe in God? And how do you like refute this or how do you deal, have you dealt with an atheist, someone who just like, you know what, they're confused or they say, I don't believe in God. What do you like to tell an atheist? Well, I, I, I don't believe that there are uh, people uh, uh, who don't believe. Uh, there is uh, a book recently was... Uh, uh, released uh, that uh, about the face of faceless mm -hmm. you know there are no people that don't have face because you see even in the language when we say taste and atheist what is atheist the atheist is the one who is denying uh, faith so why how can you deny something if it doesn't exist i mean you you deny you ha you can deny uh, something that is uh, already exists so when we, when we have to change the, the perception of an atheist, and, uh, but we know that there are people who are not sure about the existence of God. And they are called gnostics, agnostics or gnostics or agnostics. That means that those who, th who think that this is not possible to know whether God exists or not, and therefore they are indifferent or they don't want to tackle this. But on the other hand, if, if you meet somebody who, who is disputing with you about your faith, I think you should be patient about it. It is like, well, as the Quran uh, told us, if, if somebody uh, faced you like uh, challenging your faith, you should uh, say to him salam and uh, uh, you should walk uh, humbly and just uh, go you, he, your way 
and God uh, has told us that God has created all men and some of them are believers, mm -hmm. disbelievers, and some of them believers. So uh, we humans have freedom to choose, ikhtiyar, but the, the freedom of choice for in Islamic understanding is not your freedom to choose an evil. You have a freedom to choose a khair. You have freedom to choose a good. Which this is why in Islam ikhtiyar is came from the word khair, which means good. So we are free to choose this way or other way and because of that we are responsible. Because if you don't have free freedom to choose uh, by your own will, then how can you be responsible? So if when I talk with somebody who does not share with my religion, I appreciate his thoughts, I can listen to him, I disagree with him, and also he has right to disagree with me, uh, uh, with me. but I, uh, I also feel that I am enriched by, by, his, by talking to him because he is giving me chance to check my faith uh, my my faith and to strengthen my argument against those who are trying to confuse me and to uh, challenge my argument so uh, god has created the all of humanity mm -hmm. female and male so that we may know each other and we may know uh, teach each other and we may learn from each other before a couple more points before we come to an end we know that for a long time you know the creator of the heavens and earth in the verbatim word of god the quran tells us to be united we have the quran unchanged untamper tamper free tamper proof for 1400 years it's been there preserved memorized by millions it's a living miracle and we have the way the sunnah of the last and final messenger sent to mankind so we hold fast to that and we strive our best to be committed to it now you've heard us being called Mohammedans at one time, oh those are the Turks, oh it's all these names and labels being put up, and the media trying to divide, and you've heard a new term coming up, it's called some Weebi, Wabi, Wahhabi, Shabi, something like that. Have you heard this term? Can you clarify, have you heard this also, this term, and what is this uh, all about? Well, it's just, uh... How do you say it? Wahhabi? Uh, uh, Wahhabi? This is, this is, uh... Uh, th this is very complicated question to to answer, but is there such a thing? Uh, wh what if if you want to be straightforward? Yeah, you have you do your way straightforward. Uh, there are different people who see different things, so I am I I am not uh, obsessed or I, I'm not. Uh, uh, I don't have time to think about all these uh, kind of uh, different names of different people. I, for We're my, Muslim, right? Uh, for myself, I know uh, that I am Muslim. We're Muslim. And I know what it means. But at the same time, I am Bosniak. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, multiple identities. I am at the same uh, Muslim, Bosniak, Bosnian, European, and you name it then I can associate to my village, to, uh, uh, to my town, and all this. But what is important that it is each of these identities that are clear in your mind. Mm -hmm. So they are not excluding each other. Mm -hmm. They are inclusive. So you, you, you have different identities, multiple identities, but each identity you, you put priority. Some put religion, some put nationality, some put ethnicity, some put, uh, I mean, mezhab, uh, different uh, uh, school teaching and so on. What is important uh, that you do not become aggressive, no aggression. that you don't become exclusive, exclusive. that you don't uh, endanger other people and you don't or provoke other people by your identities but you take this as something which is yours and then you love your identities but you respect the identities of others and therefore it is, it is not uh, uh, anything uh, uh, particular about Muslims to have different opinions about uh, all other 
religions, cultures, traditions, and as we said, as we are told in, by the um, a tradition that ikhtilaf uh, ummati rahma, the differences of my ummet is a mercy, is something that should give us the creativity and competition in good deeds and so on and so on. So. Uh, we, we cannot have unified the world because if God wanted, he, he could create us to be one in everything, one religion, one color, one this, but he created us so colorful, so mm -hmm. different. So we have to enjoy this diversity in the unity. So there's no such thing as a Mohammedan? The, the, there's, no su there's no such thing? We've heard, I, I've heard you say this uh, in an interview, so there's no such thing as this name, and people shouldn't call each other names. I shouldn't call you a name, you shouldn't call me a name. We should be loving, kind, merciful toward each other, Absolutely. and we shouldn't divide each other. So there's no such thing as a Wahhabi? Yeah. There's no such thing. Well, you see, there are some people... I heard you say are, before that there is it. Uh, who, ...who are giving labels of different kinds. So I don't want to get into this... Uh, uh, this, this uh, uh, mess, if you like. It's a mess. Uh, I, <laughs> I just want to say that uh, uh, for those who, who want to know about Islam and Muslims, that there is only one legitimate ma name for all of us, and that is Muslim. The, 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 first, the one who was called first time in the history was Ibrahim, alayhi salatu was salam. So we are, um, uh, I am a Muslim in the sense of, of the not national sense, but in the sense that I am willingly and peacefully are uh, um, uh, submitting or obeying or listening to the will of God. And this is what is the meaning of, of my uh, understanding of, of my religion and being a Muslim. So we're ones who have submitted to the will of God. Was Jesus a Muslim? Abraham was a Muslim. You mentioned Abraham, Prophet Muhammad, all these messengers was ones who submitted to the will of God. Anyone, and, anyone who is peacefully submitting himself is to the will of, of God, we can call him by a general meaning a Muslim. So we're Muslim. And the whole universe is a Muslim because the whole universe is submitted to the will of God and the universe, the laws, the physical uh, uh, laws that God has uh, uh, put into the function, these physical laws are functioning tawan and awkarhan, willingly or unwillingly by God's will. So the whole universe is a Muslim in the sense of a peaceful or submission to the will of God because in the final analysis we our beginning comes from God and we will return to God, all of us, whether we know it or not. Closing comments and suggestions for all the millions who are tuning in to the Dean Show and for our brothers in humanity. Any closing comments and suggestions that you have for humanity? May God bless you all and give you the will for peaceful submission to God's mercy and blessings. May God Almighty, the Creator Allah, reward you for being thank with us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank sir. you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. And thank you for tuning in to another episode on the Dean Show. And we had our special guest, Grand Mufti of Bosnia. And that's the message. We're all Muslims. We're ones who have submitted to the will of God. You could be a Muslim. Jesus was a Muslim. Abraham was a Muslim. Noah was a Muslim. The sun is a Muslim. All of the things around you that are submitted to God are Muslim. So you can call us right here, 1-800-662-ISLAM. If you like what we had to say, send us your feedback, your comments. To get a free copy of the verbatim Word of God, call us 1-800-662-ISLAM. And visit us here every week on The Dean Show. Don't forget to pick up the new Dunya to Dean. And we'll see you next time, God willing. Until then, peace be to you. This is the Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum, greetings of peace to everybody, how are you? You come to get some food for the soul, you've been replete with everything else, but it's not satisfying the soul. Money can't buy that happiness, it won't bring you peace, not even a six pack of peace, you can't buy it.
This is the Dean the Dean Show. This is the Dean Show. This is the Dean Show. This is the Dean Show.